What's going on guys? Pete Dot here with the second installment of my music library organization series. Today we're going to be going over smart playlists inside iTunes and how you can use it to organize your music and how it benefits you while DJing. So first let me go over what a smart playlist is. Everyone's familiar with a playlist or crate where you throw selected songs you want into a list of songs where you can retrieve it later. What a smart playlist is, is instead of having to throw in song by song, you set up certain rules and the smart playlist will filter through all of your music and throw all of the music that fits those rules into that playlist. So for it, let's go ahead and create a smart playlist as an example. So as you can see, my music in the grouping tag has the, the tag Serato. I use this tag to signify that this is the music that I DJ with and music that I want inside my DJ library. So let's create a smart playlist using this as a rule. So I'll go down to grouping, contains, and then type in Serato, hit OK. And what I'll do is I'll name this my all crate, sort of like how Serato names it, the all crate that contains all of your music. So now if you notice, every single song in this playlist has Serato in the grouping tag, and I didn't have to add any songs to this. iTunes went through my music and added songs that fit that rule, Serato and grouping, and threw them automatically in a playlist. Now what makes this powerful is that... <clears throat> Let me try that again. So what makes this powerful is that whenever you add a new song to your, your library, and it matches the rules, it'll automatically add to whatever smart playlist you have. So you don't have to worry about adding a new song and dragging it to the playlist that you feel it should be in. If you set up your smart playlist right, it'll filter automatically into those lists. So you just drop it in your library, make sure your tags are right, and everything's set, and you don't have to worry about dropping it into any playlists or crates, which is great. Speeds up my preparation process a ton. So what I use smart playlists for, besides just creating an all crate, is I can break it down by genre, by BPMs, by years. I mean, the possibilities are nearly endless as, as far as you can think of rules for it. So let me give you an example of how I would set up, say, a dance music crate. So using the coding system uh, explained in the previous video, all of my dance music has this DNC tag. So if I go to add a smart playlist, I'll go ahead and Go to playlist. It's from the all crate. As you can see, I have a ton of smart playlists. So the rules I'm setting up are the music I want the smart playlist to look for is in this all crate. And then the second rule would be in the comments tag, comments section of the ID3 tags, look for DNC. So now all of these songs were songs from this all crate playlist that match the rule that has all the DNC tags. So if you notice, every single song has that tag. I didn't have to go through all of my music to find all my dance music, and it was pretty fast and snappy of just finding all those songs. And you can go even further. So say I want just my big room house. You can edit the smart playlist or create a new one. Say comments contain my dance tag, and my big room tag, which is I have is big. Now automatically, the smart playlist recognized the changes and changed the playlist accordingly in, a, in an instant. Really, really handy to have. Just the ability to just niche down all of your lists that quickly. So, I mean, something like that is something you can do by just typing in uh, your codes directly into the search in either iTunes or your DJ software. But I also find it handy to just have these saved in different sections in playlist folders. So as you can see, for my open format sets, I have my party all crate, which is my open format stuff. So this basically, if we look at the rules for this, going through my all crate, and it's looking for s songs that contain the party code in the comments. Now if you see these next two rules right here, You'll notice it, I have rules that say do not contain transition up and transition down. This is just for my list where 
I want to exclude songs that are transition songs that go from one BPM to another so I don't mix them up in my crate. This also shows you that you don't have to just put rules that contain stuff. You can also take stuff out of your playlist. So in this instance, I don't want any of my transition songs in my, uh, party, my party crate or my open format crate. Another cool thing you can do is I, this is my party new crate, so let's look at this. Again, the same three rules of the previous one, but I added another one where the year range is from current year to three years ago. So all of these songs are fairly new and contain that party tag, so I know they're going to work in like a prime time open format set. And this way I know that I can go through and just find new songs and I'm not digging through songs from decades ago. I can just find the new stuff and it's right there at the snap, like at a click of a, a mouse. Also, another cool thing I do is I break it down by year. So I have all of my year ID3 tags pretty well filled out. I have every year of this decade. So if I click on this folder, this is everything from 2010 on, or I can go year by year. Or for previous decades, I have my 80s. 90s and 2000s. So if we look at this, you can see that I'm just looking for um, any song that contains Serato as a tag and then it's a year from 2000 to 2009. So if I'm going and doing a set at a maybe like a 90s theme party or 80s theme party, I can automatically just jump to this playlist and then besides doing that to make it even more powerful, if I know like I'm playing like a more upbeat, you know, open format, prime time-ish set, I can also go in and type in my party my party code. And now I'm using the combination of the coding system and these smart playlists. And all of these songs right here are songs that I play like prime time at a, a 90s theme party or an 80s theme party or early 2000s theme party. Just the combination of these two, just having the setup makes this a powerful combination to use together. Now one other case for this is by BPM. So as you can see, I have these set for BPM ranges 50 to 65, and I have them in, I think, 15 BPM increments all the way up to 150 plus. This is just like a last ditch effort, just a safety net I have if I'm totally out of ideas. I know that pretty much these songs I can mix together at, at least tempo wise. And from here, I can just, you know, pull out my codes. And maybe if I'm just gone blank I, and ran out of ideas for songs, which happens to the best of us every once in a while, this can, kind, this can kind of help me speed up that process and maybe find something that I wasn't thinking of. Just another uh, way you can use smart playlists to your advantage as a safety net. So I've gone through and showed you how you can use smart playlists for genre, for year, and for BPM and showed you how to use these in combination with the coding system to use these as a, as a powerful tool. I think this is one of the best ways to organize your music. It just makes it very fast and very easy to locate songs that fit the kind of party you're doing or kind of set you're doing. And if you set it up right, you can kind of mold it to your style of DJing and it can just improve your style and make you faster and more responsive and can save you in the clutch as well. Once again, this is my second installment of my music organization series. I hope you found this useful. Please try and check out Smart Playlist inside iTunes. And please leave in the comments below if you found this useful. If you have any ideas for different Smart Playlist rules or anything like that, please leave those in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. Once again, this is PDOT. If you found this video useful, please give this a thumbs up. And if you again if you have any questions or comments leave those in the comments below. Peace.